Phase 4 is juggling four different things right now. New movies that introduce new characters, sequel movies that continue the storylines of pre-existing characters, TV shows that continue the storylines of pre-existing characters, and TV shows that introduce new characters. That being said, Hawkeye is the best. I've watched a lot of YouTube videos of people explaining why they hate Phase 4, why Phase 4 sucks, why it's the worst thing to happen to the MCU, and I've compiled all their ideas into a list, and here are what a lot of people are saying. <clears throat> there are too many projects releasing too fast. There's no end goal, or the projects are disconnected from that end goal. How can they top Infinity War and Endgame? And the reliance on hype culture and cameos. And also the humor is not good. But that being said, I don't think Hawkeye falls into these. While Hawkeye seems cool, like a really nice guy. Alright, too many projects. I think we all know the problem is that Phase 4 is just way too long compared to the other phases because of its TV shows. Now, when Marvel announced that they were going to do TV shows, I think all of us thought, sweet, these TV shows are fun little side stories about our favorite characters that are optional to watch if we decide to pay for them. But that didn't necessarily end up happening, as in Multiverse of Madness, it's pretty obvious that WandaVision is required viewing to understand that movie, and people are upset because I have to now pay for something in order to understand this movie that I'm already paying to see. And now with Kang Dynasty announced, I think Loki season 1 and 2 are now going to become required viewing as well to understand those movies. Now I agree with the sentiment that Marvel is releasing too much in such a short amount of time, but if they really wanted to release that much, I think what they need to do is start making every single TV show on Disney Plus completely optional to watch, does not connect to the grander, grander story of it all, and fun little mini stories about our favorite characters, what really we wanted in the first place. <laughs> because a lot of people feel like they're obligated to watch things in order to understand things later on in the MCU. But if they feel like something is skippable and it's like, okay, well, I'm not really interested in this, I won't watch it, I'll just watch this other thing, then that avoids viewer burnout. Because I think that's what we're experiencing right now is we're so burnt out from all these Marvel projects that we're not really interested in the new ones. I think the biggest issue the MCU is facing right now is that it's becoming like comic books. There are several overly complicated storylines going on at the same time, and you're told that they're all connected, but you're wondering if they actually are, and you need to watch them all. And just like comic books, there's a main storyline, but sometimes there can be spin-off series of just six issues focusing on one character from the team, and you get to see what that one character is like outside of a group setting. And to me, that's what Hawkeye is. Hawkeye is skippable, and I'm saying that like it's a good thing, because it is. He's the only one out of the original six Avengers that doesn't have his own movie, so it was nice to see him get his own show, even if it ultimately means nothing to the grander story. You see people all over the internet say, wouldn't it be cool if there was a TV show about just a random stockbroker in New York? But the twist is, it's MCU New York so his building can explode at random times. Well, DC actually tried that with Vanessa Hudgens, watch my high school musical video, and well, it failed. So I don't think Marvel's gonna try that anytime soon, but Hawkeye is the closest thing we're gonna get to that concept because Clint and Kate don't have superpowers. Therefore, it grounds the entire story. And by default, the villains that they face can't be doomsday level threats because they can't beat them. It has to be a nice, grounded story that doesn't affect the greater MCU because they don't have superpowers. All they can do is take out people who also don't have superpowers. And I think that's cool. All Hawkeye is ultimately doing is furthering the character development of a character we already know and introducing a new character, and we get to know her. Episode 4, I think, is amazing because there's barely any, like, actual action. It's just Clint and Kate bonding. 
that's that's all that's an entire episode of just them talking to each other and bonding and without these disney plus shows i don't think we'd ever get moments like this in the movies or at least not like 20 minutes dedicated to it While Hawkeye seems cool, like a really nice now that we know Kang is the big bad and some multiversal incursion is imminent, why should we care about Hawkeye? Why does it even exist? Why did they put money towards this? Couldn't they just introduce Kate in some random movie? They go, hey, this is Kate. She's good at shooting arrows. That's basically how Clint was introduced, so why can't they do it to Kate? Well, let's look at the Infinity Saga. There are 23 movies in the Infinity Saga. Only 11 of those have Infinity Stones in them. So why do we need the other 12? Like, look at Spider-Man Homecoming. That doesn't need to exist. Peter can just be introduced in Civil War and then show up again in Infinity War. He's still Spider-Man, but we want to see Homecoming because we care about Peter Parker. We like his character. He's personable, and we want to see what his life is like outside of the suit, too. And that's what Hawkeye is for Kate Bishop. It's called a cinematic universe for a reason. It's not just Avengers 1, Avengers 2, Avengers 3, Avengers 4. It's getting to know these people outside of a group setting and having their own character arcs, which ties in to them working together as a team, bringing their own emotional baggage of what they've been through on their own to see how they work together. That's why the first Avengers was so successful. Like I said, Hawkeye is Kate's homecoming. She's gonna show up again in the future, but that'll most likely be in a group team-up setting, and now we have the context of what she's like on her own. So now it's cool to see her in a team. And Echo is returning too in her own show. I'd actually much prefer a Hawkeye season two. But that's cool, and most likely maybe Kazi and Jack are going to return as well in very smaller parts. And I'm excited to see them. Hawkeye also fits into the grander narrative of the MCU because this might be Clint's farewell. We might not see him ever again after this. And I think it's a pretty good ending for his character. And it also leaves the door open just enough to where he can return if he ever wants to. But if not, it's completely satisfying. This is how I think the Disney Plus shows should work. Say Kate shows up in some team-up movie and an audience member goes, Huh, I like that character. I am now going to pay for a subscription to learn more about that character and the optional backstory I can watch. I think this applies to Moon Knight and Miss Marvel as well because those are newly introduced characters in the TV show that will obviously show up in the movies. And if you wanna learn more about those characters and you wanna learn more about their origin story, you can go back and watch their show. I just hope that none of the information in their shows are necessary viewing material to understand whatever movie that they're in. And to be honest, since Kate Bishop does not have as much lore behind her as Miss Marvel and Moon Knight, I think Hawkeye will not be necessary viewing material for anything. <laughs> While Hawkeye seems cool, like a really nice guy. Can this next saga top the Infinity Saga? I think this is super subjective because by the time Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars comes out, I'm sure there are people that are going to love it and think it's better, people that are going to hate it, think it's worse than the Infinity Saga, and yeah, that's just really subjective. But I know this for certain, is that it takes this small, what feels like filler, in order for the highs to really feel like highs. Not every single movie can be an event team-up movie, which maybe feels like they want it to be because that's what makes money, but... They need to take a breather once in a while, and Hawkeye is that breather. Because Iron Man 2, 3, and Captain America Civil War had nothing to do with Thanos, but they all built up Tony's character to where when he dies in Endgame, it means something. It's emotional. It makes an impact on the audience member because they've grown with this character for so long. So these filler movies and filler projects they're not really filler because you get to know the character and get really impacted by whatever they do in the future. And really all I can say is that I hope Kate does cool stuff in the future. But until then, I have a nice 
isolated, complete story that I can rewatch whenever I want. Loki, to be honest, feels a little incomplete and left on a huge cliffhanger, which we have not seen the repercussions of yet in any of the movies or TV shows. WandaVision, yes, is a complete isolated story, but it doesn't feel satisfying because in a story about Wanda's grief, it was Agatha all along. And Falcon and Winter Soldier, well, let's talk about Falcon and Winter Soldier. All right, get close. Get closer. If you've been paying attention, you know that Falcon and Winter Soldier checks off all the same boxes as Hawkeye. It's a small, isolated, contained story that continues the character arcs of existing characters and it is skippable if you want it to be because it's really easy just to watch Endgame, see Sam get the shield, he shows up as Captain America, no questions asked, you don't need to see the TV show to know what happened to him. But the TV show exists nonetheless just so if someone watches the new Captain America movie and wants to know more about Sam or Bucky, they can go do that and it's optional. I hope, I hope, I, that's what I'm assuming, is that nothing in Falcon and Winter Soldier is absolutely necessary viewing material for the new Captain America movie. Maybe stuff about Sharon Carter and Zemo, actually, now that I think about it. But, you know, I just think overall, Hawkeye is just the better TV show and executes all of these better than Falcon and Winter Soldier. Because Falcon and Winter Soldier feels like it's necessary. Hawkeye doesn't feel like it's necessary. Hawkeye feels like you watch it because you want to watch it, not because you have to watch it. While Hawkeye seems cool, like a really nice guy. Speaking of feeling like you're forced to watch things, I know a lot of people who watch Marvel projects they're not interested in because they hope someone that they are interested in makes a cameo in it. And that's not fair, that's not fun to anyone. Who wants to sit through an entire movie just to see two seconds of someone they actually like? And I know. A lot of people only watched Hawkeye for Yelena and Kingpin, so let's break this down. <laughs> Daredevil was cancelled in 2018, and then three years later, Daredevil shows up in Spider-Man No Way Home. Five days after Spider-Man No Way Home comes out, the finale of Hawkeye comes out to where Kingpin is in it, which is awesome for Daredevil fans. Here's where I have to admit that I haven't seen Daredevil. But that's okay, uh, it's, this, is, this is my opinion and I'm gonna explain further. I'll admit Kingpin isn't done a lot of service in Hawkeye and it maybe feels like maybe it could have been just another character and they were just baiting us by putting him in there. But I think Kingpin just has a very small role to play and he plays it well. And now we have a new character in the MCU that has a history with Kingpin. Isn't that cool that a villain that you like has a new rival that he can go up against instead of just Daredevil? I, I would be excited if I was a Kingpin fan. And literally anyone with an ounce of media literacy knows that he's not dead even before Kevin Feige confirmed it. So that's fun. Then there's Yelena, who I don't think is a cameo. She is a character because it makes sense for her character to be in the Hawkeye show. When part of Clint's arc is about grieving Natasha and him feeling guilty for her death, guess who also is grieving Natasha and feeling guilty for her death? Yelena. So it makes sense that the two of them are in the same series together to work through that together. And they do in the finale. And I think it's really cool bonding moment for both of them because Yelena actually learns something and her character progresses through this TV show. And that's not a cameo, that's that's an actual character being used in the show. Yeah, she's was from another movie, like their least successful movie, so it's not like they brought in Spider-Man for five seconds to for everyone to freak out over. It's Yelena who comes, serves a purpose, and then the show ends, which is really cool, and she's used very effectively. Because at the end of Eternals, like I was really confused on how they're setting up like three different characters in the end credit scene returning god knows when and then in multiverse of madness they give all these cameos that like will never show up again and then that just leaves you really confused but with hawkeye you just know that a kingpin's gonna 
show up in like five different other projects because Daredevil's showing up in five different projects and now he's getting his own TV show, which is really cool. So yeah, there's really nothing to worry about in like when Kingpin is going to return and this isn't a one-off thing that he just did for one episode and then immediately died. So yeah, I don't think Kingpin fans should sweat, but feel free to say that I'm wrong because I haven't seen the show. The Marvel humor problem has been going on long before Phase 4, and I don't think it's going to stop soon. Maybe Thor Love and Thunder was a huge wake-up call to, like, maybe not have as many jokes in a movie. But I genuinely think Hawkeye is more successful than most Marvel projects on its humor. Like, the joke when Kate is drawing in the tracksuit mafia because she's trying to remember their faces, but then she just draws stick figures. That's a funny joke. When Hawkeye can't hear and he's trying to communicate with Kate. That's funny. Their miscommunication is funny. And sue me, but I liked the Imagine Dragons joke, okay? Sorry. And also there's Yelena, who's just genuinely the best comedic Marvel character in the MCU right now, I think. While Hawkeye seems cool, like a really nice guy. In conclusion, I think Hawkeye fits its role perfectly in the MCU. It's optional viewing material if you want to get to know Kate, or if you want to know what Clint's character progression is like after Endgame and how he deals with Natasha's death. It doesn't set up anything huge at the end that you're just constantly waiting for the ramifications of. It's just its own story that doesn't feel like you need to watch it or else you're missing out, but it feels like something fun and enjoyable that you can just enjoy watching because you want to watch a TV show, not because you have to do your Marvel homework to watch the new Marvel thing. I'm excited for the premiere of She-Hulk next week, as it seems like it's following the same sort of format as Hawkeye, to where an original Six Avenger is now mentoring someone who has the same powers as them. So we'll see how that goes. I'm optimistic. And I know it will never happen because Marvel and Disney just want as much money as possible. But I dream of a day to where all Disney Plus shows are just fun little side spin-off adventures to where you get to know your characters a little bit more. And then you can go back to the movies to focus on the main story of doing things. And can't a boy dream. That's the end of the video. Thanks for listening to me talk and stay tuned because I got a new superhero video coming out soon and uh, it's not going to be about Marvel this time. It's not going to be about that either. Um, good guess though.